what was it that Will Rogers said, you know, how crazy is it when uh, uh, politicians are a joke and comedians are taken seriously? Let, let me interrupt you for just a sec, because with all due respect, many of your fellows here on this stage have said you'd had to moderate an awful lot of your views to get within the mainstream of the Republican Party and that you don't believe now what you believe when you're a mayor. Governor Huckabee, you've been accused of having been a tax and spend governor when you were in Arkansas and changing your beliefs now. Governor Romney, I don't have to go into how many times they've told, called you a flip-flopper in terms of issues and what you believed as governor of Massachusetts. Congressman Paul, respect to you, I don't know that you've changed much except your party because you were a libertarian when you first ran for president. Senator Thompson has been accused of running on a more conservative record for president than when he was in the Senate. And Senator McCain, you've been accused of, of moderating your views on the Bush tax policies in order to get uh, into the mainstream of the party and on immigration to moderate your views. In the Republican presidential race, the Texas governor comes out punching against the president. Texas Governor Rick Perry has hit the ground running. Rick Perry coming out firing all guns. He's new! We haven't seen him before. The media really is the dog in up. You know, it's been seven hours. I'm tired of Michelle Bachman. Twirl! <laughs> Remember how he was bragging about his jobs record in Texas? Forty percent of all the jobs created in, in America. How he'd managed to create all these jobs in the state. From June of 2009 until the present were created in Texas. Picture is nothing to brag about. What Texas shows is that a state offering cheap labor and less important weak regulation can attract jobs from other states. Well, duh. The point is that arguing from this experience that depressing wages and dismantling regulation in America as a whole would create more jobs involves a fallacy of composition. Every state can't lure jobs away from every other state. Now, clearly, Perry has no trouble railing against taxes and the Recovery Act while happily accepting the taxpayer-funded help in the state of Texas. Jobs come by keeping taxes low, by controlling spending, by reforming tort uh, laws and ensuring that regulations are fair. And perhaps little whispers like this one from the Bank of America Director of Public Policy, James Mahoney. Bank of America, we will help you out. Wait, what? Pity that the same Bank of America can't help out the 3,500 job holders it plans to cut in the third quarter of this year alone, or the thousands more who may follow them out the door. Perhaps their salaries will help contribute to the bank's largesse towards Governor Perry. Quote, Bank of America does not endorse presidential candidates. The reference was about following up on the substance of the speech about job creation and economic growth. What Bank of America did not mention in its statement is that while Mahoney doesn't appear to be a registered lobbyist, he is a chairman of Bank of America's New Hampshire PAC, an influence post focused on dispensing political cash, not a policy post. Surprise, surprise. Uh, corporations are people, my friend. Of course they are. Everything corporations earn ultimately goes to people. Where do you think it goes? So number one, so number one, you can raise taxes. You can raise taxes. That's right. 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 That's it has because we can always print money to do that. So there is zero probability of default. We need more money to play politics at this particular time in American history is almost treacherous or treasonous. Now we have a southern governor, I can't remember his name, who's coming into the campaign. <laughs> He realizes that talking about the Fed is good, too. But I'll tell you what, he makes me look like a moderate. I mean, I, I have never once said Bernanke has committed treason. <laughs> but I have suggested very strongly that the Federal Reserve System and all the members have been counterfeiters for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Since they see two of the so-called top-tier candidates, Rick Perry and Michelle Bachman, um, copycatting his position on the Federal Reserve. Perry said today, almost treacherous or treasonous regarding Ben Bernanke. What's your thoughts, sir? 
Well, they, those were pretty strong words, but you know, the founders felt pretty strongly about counterfeiting. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't call it treasonous, but I would call what our Federal Reserve does morally equivalent to counterfeiting because they create money out of thin air and they give us our problems. You know, in 1792, when they had the first Coinage Act, they thought so uh, highly, uh, they were so, thought so strongly about this issue, they invoked the death penalty for people who would counterfeit. So they don't like, they never liked this idea of counterfeiting and they d did not believe we had the right to admit bills of credit. So I like this issue. To me, the fascinating thing is that, uh, you know, the governor comes into the race, he gets a lot of attention, and on the first day out, I mean, they're asking him about the Federal Reserve. This hasn't been done maybe ever. So I would so say monetary, monetary po policy. Monetary policy is monetary. front and center in this presidential race, which is probably where it ought to be. Now, you, sir, have always been a strong opponent of devaluation and money printing. Is Governor Rick Perry on? to something here. Well, I think politically he's pretty astute. You know, uh, he he came out for secession too when he had a Tea Party candidate running against him. So no, he's pretty good. But I have no idea what his monetary policies issues are. You know what his real principles are. But I do know that uh, you, you know that uh, the, the fact that he came out and didn't say, "Hey, lay off the Fed. Fed's my friend," which means it's a turning uh, on this whole issue of monetary policy. And you're right. Uh, I was motivated in the 1970s because the handwriting was written on the wall for me uh, 40 years ago, and we just, uh, you know, sort of celebrated that date 40 years ago when the Bretton Woods ended. So uh, that was a signal to me that the dollar was doomed. You are my